and let's get into this. The Nighthawk Custom Vice President Commander. This thing is an absolute gem. I think I just swallowed a bug. Um, <laughs> and we'll talk about that next. But um, so this thing is an absolute gem. So Nighthawk Customs, what they primarily do is they focus on 1911s and 2011s or double stack platform firearms. They are a very boutique uh, manufacturer and they mainly focus on doing, like in the name, custom firearms. You can always add some custom touches to anything you do. This is part of their boardroom series of firearms, which means that this is kind of their flagship series. I went with the vice president because the president has a few things on it that I'm not really big on, but I like the fact that they have minimal window cuts on here and well, lightning cups, I guess you'd say, to um, kind of lighten up the slide. The impulse to this is extremely amazing. Also, what you'll notice is this is a barrel bushing setup that I have here. I am more a fan of barrel bushing setups. I'm not a big bull barrel type of guy, but some people like them, some people don't. For me, in my current situation with my arm, it's kind of hard for me to take down a bull bearing, bull, bull barrel setup um, one-handed versus a bushing barrel setup. What makes Nighthawk different than other manufacturers? So manufacturers like Staccato and recently Springfield getting into the double stack game, you kind of get what you buy. That's, that's, that's it. You get what they have offered and there's not a lot of variations that you can do to these to change these things up. This one has a few accoutrements done to it. As I said, this is a vice president, so this comes with a tri-cup top. It has the window porting in there, or the windows cut into it. It has the serrations, which I really like these serrations. They are really grippy. This also has a fluted barrel hood. All the corners and rough edges dehorn and everything on there. The trigger on this is absolutely amazing. This is clear. And the trigger has no, no over-travel, no pre-travel. Once you're on the wall, that's it. The safety was tuned. The grip safety was tuned. Everything was tuned perfectly. I mean, this is an outstanding firearm. And not to mention, it looks amazing. Um, this one is a rose gold barrel on this one. And, I mean, as you can see, every, every fine detail on this is, you know, taken care of. To even include the you know, slide stop. It's also beveled in really nicely and everything else. I mean, everything on this is done very amazing. These guns tend to run anywhere between 29 ounces to around 34 ounces, which makes it very carryable. Um, this one's a little bit on the lighter end. Um, it's still gonna be a little bit heavier than like something like a Staccato P aluminum frame but it is not as heavy as some of the full size or just all full steel you know, guns that they put out there. I have an Agent 2 Commander and that is definitely a little bit heavier than this. And this one feels a little bit more comfortable when you carry this. The thing that I like about this as well is it comes with an aluminum grip. If there's one thing I can say about the aluminum grip that Nighthawk offers, I wish it was a little bit more grippy. I mean, they're not very tactile. Um, you do get a hold of it the harder that you grip on this and the harder that you squeeze. But, I mean, like I said, it would be nice to have this a little bit more sharp. Um, just so it's not so much me uh, manhandling this to get a good grip on it. It's more so just something that's very tacky in your hands. Other than that... I would say that what you get is exactly what you pay for with these. I mean, the grip is great, the trigger is great, and let's not forget something that is very special about this, the iOS cut. So the iOS cut with Nighthawk is probably one of the strongest features on these 2011s and 1911s that they offer. The iOS cut, if you can actually see, it's very hard to see, but there's a line in there and that's the actual gap where the plate lines up. So the plate slides into the rear. There's basically a dovetail on there. You slide it all the way forward. There's a little hex, there's a little um, key that, a screw that you tighten down down here and there's a cross block in there. There's a little um, rod that you push in there and the screw tightens down that and it basically holds that plate in place. It's not gonna come loose because there's so many things making sure it stays on the gun that you know it's not gonna really come loose without a, without a fight. The best thing about that is if you notice, these are factory height sights. You do not need suppressor height sights to be able to get a good witness in the window 
with this optic system. That is what makes this optic system so great to me is that it's so low. And if you see me fidgeting, it's because these bugs are biting the shit out of my legs. But let's keep going. The one thing I do want to say about the Nighthawk Vice President and the other boardroom series is make sure you have the financial means to grab one of those. They are not the cheapest offering from Nighthawk, but they are one of the premier offerings from Nighthawk. If you're just looking to buy in a Nighthawk double stack series guns, um, they do start out at the GRP. And if I'm completely honest with you guys, the GRP is a great one to grab. Uh, depending on what you're looking for and what you want, a GRP is kind of the base model for them but i mean at the end of the day we're talking a base model of something that's more the equivalent of mercedes so i mean you're still driving a mercedes it's still a great car you know um the vice president starts i think around 4900 maybe five and goes up from there but like i said if you're just looking to get in a nighthawk you know a grp is a good way to start but no matter what you get you can always go through nighthawk and they will always do a little custom touches to it one thing i forgot to mention before i go nighthawk is also known for doing custom stuff what that means is one gun one gunsmith when you get your gun, you will see the name of the person that worked on that gun that has done everything on there. If for any reason you have to send that back for warranty RMA, or if you want something done to it, it will go right back to that person. So you can actually trace back exactly who has touched that gun. You're normally not doing that unless you go through a company that is like some of these companies that it's just one guy building those guns. You know, typically you don't get to do that. Now I know there's other companies like Wilson Combat that do some stuff, but it's a little bit different with Nighthawk. So, I mean, those are all the big points to Nighthawk. And yeah, if, if you're looking for something that's kind of top tier level, definitely go to Nighthawk. So closing thoughts on this. What is it like? Would I buy one? Well, full disclosure, I do do stuff with Nighthawk currently, but when I bought that, I did not. And that was bought out of my own money. So that should answer that question for you right then and there. That is something I paid for with my own money. I did get a good deal on it, but I wanted that and that's why I got that. So that should answer that question for you right there. Do I feel like it compares to all the other 2011s that I've shot? To date, um, that is probably the most fun 2011 I've ran. And I've ran compensated 2011s, but I'm not a big fan of larger guns once they get to a certain length you know they're flat and everything but they just don't do it for me at that point i like to be able to conceal them i'm a i'm more of a fan of a commander length system that is the flattest and fastest i've ever been able to run a commander length gun so that should tell you everything if i had to buy it again would i yes if i had to sell some ass cheeks on the street to afford it i might you know because i don't know if you've noticed these amazing kilo shorts i'm wearing but uh these cheeks go for a premium and so do Nighthawk Custom. So without further ado, those are my final thoughts and I will see you guys next time on QRC.